How many type of resin we have there, Danny? Well, you have epoxy resin, you have a polyester. Polyester resin. Basically, two type of resin: polyester and a, and a epoxy resin. Epoxy. Remember, guys, the polyester resin is a is a polymer. Uh, it's basically a monomers of a styrene connected with the, the glue, and the glue is the MEK, the hardener. The hardener. And don't forget, for reparation, if the hole was fabricated in polyester resin, you can do the reparation with the epoxy resin. You can do the reparation with polyester, but uh, you have problems in the future. You have leaks. Exactly. No? You only want to do it once, so just do it right. Correct. Exactly. In other words, with the epoxy resin, you can fix it, uh, polyester uh, structures. But uh, uh, with the polyester resin, you can fix it only polyester structures, no, no epoxy extractor. Be careful with that. Uh, Danny, uh, the components, both of them, they have uh, the hardener and the resin. Right. No. The hardener is toxic a lot. Yes, you How can. How you clean? Yeah, that you definitely don't want to get that on your skin. It will burn you. Uh, if you get it on your skin, you're gonna to want to use a lot of water to water, dilute water, it, water, get water, it off your water. skin. Danny, we are going to refresh for our students. Uh, I want to do a reparation. And uh, what is the first step when you try to do a reparation in a an instructor in a fiberglass? Well, let's just say there's a gouge in the side of the boat. Okay, so let's say there's a gouge here. So basically what I would do is I would open the gouge a little bit to get more material because you want fresh material. Correct, correct. Because what happens is, and don't use Bondo. Bondo's not going to cure anything because if you just put Bondo over it, as soon as you use that boat, the Bondo's going to crack yeah, and you're going to see yeah. exactly where you bonded it. So what you do is you, if you have a hole like this, you're going to go a little bit bigger all the way around. So when you put the new material, it bonds to the fresh fiberglass. The first got. step is remove the all material contaminated. Oh, yeah, yeah. That uh, yeah, is, is important, uh, guys. Yeah. The, the, the amount of hardener yeah. that... And, that you, and you have to be careful because if you put too much hardener, it will catch on fire. Correct. I mean, you, and you should never ever throw like a, a, a little bucket of hardener with the resin in, it in a garbage can. You leave no. it outside no. and let it until the next day and then you throw it in the garbage can. You throw it on the garbage the, can yeah, and, catch and, fire. and you sure. produce a fire. Absolutely. A fire. Because uh, it's, it's slow, but it's fire. Oh, they're experiencing because you know they're gonna they're gonna put too much yeah, hardener. Yeah, yeah. And you'll see what we're talking about. Okay, very important that one. And always, always prepare the resin with the MEK in a ventilated area, open area. So, be and careful with the engine rooms, especially in gasoline boats. Yes, you should put a fan that pulls air out, and you should put a fan that pulls air in. Okay, uh, other important thing, Danny. Uh, I apply uh, the first layer. Uh, uh, can I repeat another one the next day? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, no problem, no? No problem. It's better, no? It's, it's better. You, you should always do it in layers. Correct. When, when, you, when we used to build boats, you, you, know, you spray the gel coat in the mold, you have to wait. The Correct. next day we come, depending on how, how it feels, it feels good, we leave the first layer mat, walk away until okay. that dries, and then we build it like that. It oh, okay, time. all right, that's important. You're not throwing layers and layers. Now, once you have a base, like gel coat, the mat, and one layer rolled and woven, then you can do two, three mats at a time. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's but that first, first initial, you have to do it in a little, a little bit of a process. Okay, uh, in some situations, you need to uh, uh, put in, in a, like a sandwich of uh, uh, pieces of metals. Yeah. Uh, what metal is uh, recommended to be laminated after that with fiberglass? It would be stainless steel. A stainless steel series, series 300. 300. Uh, aluminum alloy, 5000. You can use aluminum alloy too. Okay, and uh, those are the most common, no? Those are the most common. Okay, when you uh, apply resin over stainless steel, it's a good idea sand the stainless steel, the stainless steel and remove the, the, the oxide of chromium. Right. Uh, in order to get more uh, uh, adherence. More, yeah, more bite, more, more adhesion. Correct. From the, the same with the aluminum. It's a good idea sand the aluminum in order to, cre to create well, good, good It's bond. the same with when you're doing a bottom paint. You have to sand the bottom, de-wax it because you want that fresh material. So when you put the new material on it, it bonds. Okay, it. guys. Now we are going to continue uh, with the, the gel coat. And uh, what, the, what is the function of the gel coat and uh, how the gel coat is prepared and uh, some tips uh, when you apply the gel coat. Uh, what is the main function of the gel coat? 
Well, Joco is just like the polyester resin. It's polyester resin with pigment. With, with pigment. In it. Yeah. You can pick the color you want. It's the same thing. Ah, you can ah, you can prepare the external uh, paint of your boat. Yeah. Uh, you order in a in an special uh, uh, shop dedicated to prepare paints. Right. And they prepare the Joco with the color that uh, that uh, right. you prefer. The only thing that people have to realize, like if it's an older boat, what happens is the sun changes the pigment on the on the paint. And then, so what happens is when you when you try to paint it with the same the same color code, it's not going to match. So sometimes you have to have your real skilled painter that he can add colors to make make it match, or you have to wet sand the whole entire boat to get the fresh gel coat for it to match. Okay, uh, the gel coat is uh, the first surface. Uh, is the surface that uh, produces the finish. Uh, the smooth area. It's the first thing you put in a mold. Correct. And uh, it's supposed that the gel coat is uh, 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 not permeable. No. Uh, exactly. But uh, that's not true. It's a little permeable if it's in permanent contact uh, with the water. Oh, this, they sell this at West Marine. You mix, gel, you mix a gel coat on here and then you can spray it. It has a little aerosol. Pack. Ah, nice. You found that, that one in a the West Marine, Marine Builders Warehouse. And you apply the paint only yeah. in the area. Oh, that's wonderful because uh, you, you don't need to prepare a whole gun like this. Prepare here. And it's disposable. Oh, that's disposable. Nice. Yes. No, I like it. I like it. And it's prepared. It's prepared. Yeah. And the, they, All you gotta do is make the mixture correct and then apply it. That's All it. right. That's and once wonderful. you're done, toss it. Is that's done. wonderful. That's nice. So gel coat is the hardest to apply and to make it finish because you have to do a sanding process compared to everybody else but it lasts longer. All grip, you paint it, you don't have to sand it and do nothing to it. You don't even have to wax it, but it only lasts five, six years. Oh, really? Gel coat lasts you 40, 50 years as long as you take care of it. Oh, that's wonderful. That's this the is, difference. This is a great Most people only want to use all grip because they don't want to have to sand it. Yeah. So like when you guys apply this on the, on, the, on the stuff that we're going to do in the lab, you're going to have to sand it with 600, 300, 800, 1,000, Glad. In 2000, and then you buff it, wax it, it'll look brand new. It's all preparation. Preparation is 99% of the job. The spraying, I mean, obviously, you know how to know how to spray, but the spray is nothing. Preparation, preparation. good tools, and, uh, and protection. Yeah, protection you want to use good tools, your, absolutely. Your skin, uh, gargle for your eyes, and uh, keep uh, the acetone pretty close, and water. A lot of water, especially if uh, you have a MEK or a uh, and resin in your skin. Yeah.